Tanner Tech. Tanner Tech. Tanner Tech. Tanner Tech. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today I'm going to be doing the second part of my manufacturing circuit board series. And in this second part, I'll be showing you how to etch a circuit board using this chemical called ferric chloride. So, let's get started. So, the first thing that you're going to need is an old container. Now, this container previously contained ferric chloride from uh, my other circuit board etchings. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and I'm going to take my bottle of ferric chloride. Now, be careful because this stuff is corrosive not to get it on your hand. And what you do is you're going to take it, and you're going to pour it inside here. So, I'm going to pour maybe about three centimeters, maybe two centimeters inside there. And as you can see, that's just about, just about enough. Now, what ferric chloride does is it dissolves copper. So what it does is it takes the copper ions and it replaces them with the iron ions inside the ferric chloride. Now, this copper chloride only acts on bare copper. So the copper that's covered by the permanent marker won't get etched. So after we submerge this uh, piece of copper inside the ferric chloride, it'll remove all the bare copper and leave all the copper covered by the traces. So, after you have this container filled with this uh, ferric chloride etchant solution, now it's time to prepare the hot water bath that's going to keep the ferric chloride warm during the etching process, so the circuit board will be etched uh, more quickly. So. For the hot water bath, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take the sink, you're going to want to fill up another Tupperware container, maybe about uh, two to three centimeters full of water, so about that much. We're going to microwave the hot water bath so it gets it nice and hot. So now that I have boiled this water, I'm going to set it on top of my, um, my ferric chloride agitator, which you saw in my previous videos and of course put the magnets inside and I'm going to set the ferric chloride inside it's going to rest in there very good and now for the final part I'm going to put my circuit board inside the ferric chloride and so it sinks and now that's done I can seal up the container of ferric chloride using this uh, lid and then power up the, the and I can power up the agitation table. And so here we go. Now I'll come back later when it's all done. Which will take about maybe 15 minutes. So when I initially fired this uh vibrator motor up to etch the ferric chloride, I realized that the big offset that I had on it was too big. And it was causing it to oscillate at too low of a frequency, which was causing the water to jump out, which is not good, because we don't want it flying everywhere. So as you can see, when the uh, agitator motor's on, you can see the ultrasonic vibrations inside the water. You can see how it's a bunch of little tiny waves. Now this is constantly moving around the ferric chloride and causing uh, more surface area on the copper to be exposed to the ferric chloride which in turn makes it etch faster. So this um, uh, agitator table is really working for my ferric chloride. Now after about 10 minutes of running, the hot boiling water has already exhausted all its heat into the ferric chloride. So I can turn it off, and now I'm going to take out the ferric chloride. And I already checked the board and it's not done. I'm going to move it out, and I'm going to take this and I'm going to re... Uh, re-energize this water with more with more heat. So I'll be back. After reheating the water I can now fire it up again and uh, power it up and now I can uh, wait for the circuit board to etch a little bit longer. So it's been about maybe 10 minutes since the last showing of this so I'm going to turn off my motor and pull out the thing of ferric chloride. So now what I'm going to do, as you look down here, so you can see that I'm going to reach in here with my pliers, because you do not want to put your fingers in the ferric chloride. I'm warning you, if you put your fingers in the ferric chloride, it will make your fingers super itchy and it's not good. So as you can see, if you look on here, you can see that 
all of the copper is gone. It's left in place by this yellow residue, which is uh, what the ferric chloride makes. So now, let's go rinse this off. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the circuit board, I'm going to rinse it off. As you can see, as soon as the water hits it, it turns white, which is the color it's supposed to be. And as soon as you've got most of the ferric chloride rinsed off, it's okay to hold it. So after you've got most of the ferric chloride cleaned off the board, now you can t take off the permanent marker with the use of some acetone. So I'm going to take some acetone here, which is just some normal acetone. I'm going to kind of soak a little cotton ball in it. Just get a little on there. A little more. And after you soak the cotton ball in acetone, you can use it to wipe away all of the, the Sharpie or the permanent marker from your circuit board. After you finish cleaning off all the permanent marker off the copper clad board, you should end up with something looking like this, which looks quite a lot like a normal circuit board that you would get. So, in the next video, I will show you how to solder the components on here. Thank you for watching.